everybody. This is Will Selenrod and welcome to another episode of Story Behind the Collector. Today we're going to be talking to Les. He's got a fantastic uh, lineup of cars we're going to talk about. Um, this one is a 68 Charger. It's an actual Hemi Charger. We're going to take a look at that one. And this one is a uh, 1987 Grand National. This one is a tribute car. Uh, another 86 uh, Regal and Oldsmobile 442. We're going to take a look at that one. We've got a 330i convertible and we also have a uh, 2002 uh, BMW which is one of my favorites in uh, Les's collection and uh, we're going to uh, take a closer look at that. So we'll interview Les, we'll pull some of these cars out of the garage and uh, I hope you enjoy this episode. Everybody, I'm going to introduce you to Les, and he's the owner of these fantastic cars. Oh, Les, good morning, good to see you again. Always a pleasure. Yes, always. Good morning. So, tell us about this fantastic Charger that you have here. I love the color. This is my newest car. I have it for about uh, two months now. It's a 1968 Dodge Charger. It started its life with a 440 V8 motor and an automatic transmission, mm -hmm. but during its restoration, someone added a Hemi motor to it and a four-speed transmission, wow. which is probably the most desirable setup that you can get within the car. Mm -hmm. And it's a period correct Hemi, correct? It's a period correct Hemi. Um, the engine um, is really what the whole car is about. Mm -hmm. um, this car was a very underrated car, the Hemi car. Uh, it was said to have 426 cubic inches and 425 horsepower. But people have dyno these cars and they've been up with a 585 horsepower. Wow. Uh, drag races love these cars. The performance world still regard this as one of the best engines that was ever available. Uh, the heavy motor is a uh, nickname the elephant. So, well, let's take a look at it. Can we pop the hood? My foot. So, was this a rotisserie uh, restoration then? It absolutely was. Oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah, that is... the Dukes of Hazard, everyone knows. Well, they did a reunion show. And when they did the reunion show, the person who restored that car is the person who restored this car. So, everything is done, and everything is done correctly. Literally, I, there is no, no grid in here. No, I mean, this is spotless. Yeah. The car is beautiful. The car has been uh, driven very little. Since 2013, there was a record only of 100 miles added to the car. It was inside a gentleman's collection. He loved it, but that's about to change. We're going to put some miles on the car and enjoy it, and that's yeah. what cars are all about. And you have a manual transmission. Good man. Yep. That's and it also be a had, lot of fun. It also has a matching white stripe on the back. These are uh, period correct rims on the car, but they're not the, the original rims on it. The car never had this size tires that are now on this car. Um, the Diameter car, wise, you're saying they're bigger? Uh, width wise, yeah. Oh, okay. The width of the rim is much bigger, and the two rear, the rear tires are 295. The majority of these are 383s, 440 engines, but this one with the Hemi, there are very, very few of them, and, and uh, so it is from unique. a brake standpoint, do there are drum brakes all the way around. Then there are disc brakes up front. Okay, so yeah. that's what makes the the uh, lack of power brakes more acceptable because it is a good braking system mm -hmm. and drum in the rear. Well, this is a car that I've had for a while. This is a 1987 Buick Grand National. Started its life out as a Buick Regal luxury car, and then Buick added this turbocharged motor that they were working on for many years, but they didn't get it right until 86 and 87. Um, in 86, uh, the car had 235 horsepower, and in 87, it had 245. Now these were underrated horsepower. 
when this car has been tested, it's over 300. And please remember that in the 80s, it was a very dark period for performance. Yeah. So this was considered one of the fastest cars in the United States, if not the fastest car in the United States, and might even be the world. I believe the Porsche Turbo was one of the few cars that was quicker in the late 80s. But this car is an amazing car in many features, but one of them is its um, low mileage. Um, it only has 2,000 miles on it. That's incredible. Yeah. It's a Canadian car, so it is in kilometers. It has mm -hmm. approximately 3,500 kilometers on it. But um, 2,000 approximate miles is the changeover. This car is also very heavily optioned. So not only does it have automatic power steering, power brakes, power windows, tilt cruise, um, it does have the factory T-tops, and that is, again, a desirable option, yeah. which you would take them off and put them in the trunk. Back then, there were very few convertibles, so this is how General Motors was able to give the public what they were looking for, was a T-top car. Mm -hmm. um, this car also has an electric block heater. Because it was a Canadian-sold car, most cars oh. over there would want... Mm. Wake up a little morning. colder up there. Yeah, yeah. And the block heat has never been down on the car. Uh, so it, it really is heavily optioned uh, equipment-wise. Um, I was fortunate recently just able to pick up the original tires for the car. They went into reproduction. So the car came originally with the Goodyear Eagle GT tires. And these are exact duplicate of the original tires with the raised white letters, and it even says it on the window sticker. So are these like a bias fly then, or a radial, or? These are radials today. Mm -hmm. They were radials then, but it was an early radial. It's a wonderful car. Okay, so this is a 3.8 liter V6 motor that was commonly found in the 80s and 90s in most of General Motors cars. They use it in everything from Oldsmobiles to Chevrolet. It's a very popular engine. But what they did in the 1980s is they started to experiment with turbocharging. Okay. And what turbocharging does is it compresses the air before entering into the motor. Mm -hmm. So if you start out with denser air going into the engine, you're going to have superior power. But then what they did is they added something called an intercooler. And that's this unit here that's in front. And what an intercooler does is it cools off the air before going in. Okay. It's le later realized that compressing hot air is very difficult. Compressing cool air is very easy. And then here we have another uh, Grand National, correct? But this has a little different flavor to it. So being that this car only has 2,000 miles on it, I really couldn't drive it the way that I'd like to drive it. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I was going to get another one to drive. When I bought this car, it's what we call a rolling chassis. It had no motor in it. So at that point, um, I could not restore it to a factory original car because mm -hmm. it didn't have the original motor in it. I decided to have a little fun and make it into a GNX tribute car. So, though this car um, started out as a Grand National, mm -hmm. we added, as you can see on both sides, the wheel lip extensions. Oh, yeah. And these bring it out uh, about three inches, and that allows a bigger entire wheel package to go on the car for better performance and better grip. And then I see these side vents here. These are louvers, and these are real louvers. Okay. So, you know, one of the things that we need to do all cars is you want to keep it cool under the hood. Yeah. Uh, a turbocharger, especially the early ones before they went into oil cooling the, the bearings on it, you would turn off a turbocharged motor, open up your hood, and you'd see it glowing red. Wow. So you really want to get the, the, the heat out of that compartment. Because as we discussed earlier, cold air compresses easier. Mm -hmm. And increases performance. And increases performance. So the, the um, Grand National started out, they took 547 of them, brought them over to McLaren, 
They added approximately all the same, none of them were T-top cars like that. They were all hard tops because okay. they didn't want the torsion in it. Because of the added horsepower. Yeah. So they added the wheels and tires, they added the louvers, they added a bigger turbocharger, they added injectors for more fuel into the motor. They changed the rear end and they've got probably one of the most sophisticated rear ends of any American car. It's a four link rear end system. Wow. And uh, if you've ever seen a car take off at a drag strip, you know how they raise up? Mm -hmm. Okay, because of uh, torque. Yeah. You'll, you'll have a raising up of the rear of the car. And you'll see this, some of the cars actually twist a little. Too. That's right. So this car huckers down. And okay. all the weight gets transferred onto the rear axle before you launch it. Because of the, the rear end Because of the rear end uh, that they have added into this car. Yeah. So again, you can see it has a GNX um, uh, turbo cover. And this was actually made by the person who made all the original turbo covers. Okay. For cool. it. So we were able to find the person on that. I try to keep it stock looking, um, but there are a lot of modifications on the car. Um, this engine is built with what we call a roller cam. So instead of having two pieces of metal hitting one another, in between you have a wheel. So the wheel will soften it and allow you to have higher RPMs and also perform better. So this has a roller cam system in it. Mm -hmm. And it also has, um, to stick with the factory valve covers, we actually had to put spaces in here. So I have four valve cover gaskets on this two on each side, one on one side of the space and one on the other side. So it's a complicated system. And why would you do that? I had to raise it up to, to, to stop the oil from falling out of the motor. If you don't have valve covers, the oil's gonna go in yeah. wherever it is. And it had to go higher because of the roller cam system. Oh, I'll be, okay, got it. I love the color on this Oldsmobile Les. This is just striking. Has this been repainted? It has been repainted. This is one of my oldest cars. Um, you know, I wanted to, to, to go to car shows and I wanted something to be proud of. And I bought this car about 12 years ago. And I didn't do much to it. The paint job was okay, but I, you know, it was, it was a 20-yard car. You know, from the 20-yard oh, yeah. line, it looked great. Mm -hmm. When you got close, you saw the imperfections in the paint. Um, but during the pandemic, I have a, a neighbor of mine who's in the body business, and he gave me a wonderful deal on a paint job. His business car. was probably slow during the pandemic, right? Everybody was homebound. Yeah, he was just trying to keep his employees employed. Yeah, that's and keep busy, and, and no one was driving, and no one was having accidents. So uh, he did a wonderful paint job on the car, and at that point, we also beautiful. made an improvement uh, recently on the hood. This is a different hood than originally came. This is a preferred hood if you have a big block motor. Now this is not a big block motor, but this is a matching motor to the car. So this is an all original drivetrain. It's a 350 cubic inch engine, mm -hmm. which is probably the most common motor out there yeah. for many years. Um, recently I had it rebuilt that I sent it out and they did everything. They ripped it down to nothing. They turn the crank, they put new bearings on it, they put new timing chain on it, new distributor, new water pump, everything. Valve job completely done to it. Um, the cam was worn out. We put all new we put a new cam in there, new piston rings, and reinstalled the, the motor in the car and it really prefer Purrs and has great performance. And it's better performance than what it originally had, right? So you increase the performance on it? These cars were at the beginning of the dark ads. This is 72. Mm -hmm. So the highest performance in um, muscle car era took place probably in the 60s, but the government was after them to get make better gas mileage, mm -hmm. fewer emissions, and at that point, they lowered the horsepower on the car. And this is factory, these uh, hood latches, correct? These are not. Oh, okay. So this hood has been replaced, but it's an exact replica of the original one. Most people who get hoods for these cars will get fiberglass hoods. Okay, I was going to ask what this is. So the factory, what they did is they made a steel hood, and these are fiberglass scoops that 
that would then. Uh, uh, oh my gosh, that's got to be so it. difficult to blend the paint when you got fiberglass on steel. Um, it didn't seem to be as much problem as you and me thought it was going to be. But it, it's, you can't tell. You it's, can't it's tell. It's a perfect it did a beautiful match. job. Yeah. <clears throat> but this would be the factory uh, a stripe package that you would get with this hood, with these hold downs if you bought the car new with the big block. And these are functional, these scoops? They are, they are. And here's the motor underneath. Another very clean engine bay less. Thank you. And this car right here um, has been improved. Um, this air filter was an upgrade that I put on, I think from all the old Oldsmobiles, I like the way that this one looks the best instead of a mm -hmm. single snorkel they have a dual snorkel and you got the gold on the uh, valve covers and the engine block and the engine block is is all correct on that it, this is an air-conditioned car it's got power steering power brakes one problem we did have that a lot of um, uh, people who have performance cars uh, come into when you put a cam into a car changing the factory camshaft when you take your foot off the gas, you lose vacuum in the motor. And the trouble is the brakes work over vacuum pressure. Mm -hmm. So what I've added, and you can't see it, I actually have it buried under the fender on that side, is a can that holds the air, so when that situation happens, it will deliver the vacuum that you need. So this was a very important feature that, that they have. That's how they did it back then. Now you can actually buy vacuum pumps that will produce okay. the vacuum pressure you need if your motor does not give you enough vacuum. Now this car also was equipped with what we call a Hurst Shifter Automatic. Oh yes. So they also nicknamed it the His Her Shifter. So if you take a look inside, yeah, you'll see it's called a Dual Gate Shifter. And I'm actually going to roll down these windows for you so you can see inside without a reflection. So the dual gate shifter means you can just bring it down like a regular automatic and put it in drive, or it has a side where you can pull over and you can drop it and then you would manually shift it. You can do the, your one, two, three automatic. Uh, so that was to his, hers. She would like it, boom, in automatic. And he wants to get a little sportier and do the shifting. Mm -hmm. In fact, right behind Will on the wall, if you notice, that's the Hurst Shifter emblem. Yeah, right here. And that's a very famous emblem through time. partial to BMWs and as you know we have a partnership with the BMW CCA so is this the BMW side of the garage now we're on? <laughs> yes it is. Um, this one right here um, is a 2007. This is a 335i convertible. This is a wonderful car. It is just such a pleasure to drive. It only has about 35,000 original miles on it. Nice. I bought it from a gentleman in Huntington who was the original owner and because of failing health he just was not driving it that much mm -hmm. and uh, was willing to let it go. The paint is original on the car. This car has got a 3.5 liter six cylinder motor with twin turbos on it and it's 300 horsepower okay. and this car is a blast to drive. Everyone is looking for the M-Series cars, mm -hmm. and the M-Series car in this car would be basically this car, but then they do a little modification to the motor. Yeah, it has a bubble hood, and, and some of them have the V8 engine. Right. And I've heard from uh, performance tuners that you can actually get more horsepower out of this six-cylinder than you can out of the V8. That's what I've heard. I've heard you can actually chip the car, change the air box, and a couple of other Exhaust. simple yeah. modifications, and pick up as much as 100 horsepower mm -hmm. to have a 400 horsepower. Now, you're a high horsepower guy, just based on what we just yeah. learned from the Hemi and the GNX and the 442. 
But this so, car is more than adequate within its stock form. Yeah. It doesn't need anything more than this. And, yeah, um, and I was just looking to see you have an automatic in there. So yeah. this is like, what is this, your uh, Sunday morning car? It's just a different car. You know, uh, I was looking for one of these. I didn't know exactly what I was looking for, but I definitely wanted a convertible. I've had a number of BMW convertibles. I had a, a 2003, and I had a 97 and an 87. Okay. So I've had a few of these, and they're wonderful cars. And so I was looking for something that I could enjoy with my wife, go out, I have to take a long ride, and this car is this bad car. Again, my uh, love is always for BMWs, and oh, while I really love your muscle cars less, they're fantastic, believe me. But uh, this is still one of my favorites of all your cars. Uh, this is the 1974-2002, correct? T-I-I. -I. Let's add that little part to it. Yeah, that's a very important part. And why <laughs> is that? Well, the BMW um, made the 2002. It actually started out with a smaller engine. Um, it was a 1600, and in Europe they actually had smaller versions of it. But this is the car that saved BMW. If this car didn't exist, BMW we would have done today. Yeah, and they call this the new class or neo class, something like that. Yeah, yeah. something like that. And when they first came out with this body style, uh, what year was that? Do you remember? Well, it came out in 1960 something. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it had some earlier versions that didn't quite look like this, but did it. They had a TI uh, earlier version. Mm -hmm. So they had a couple of different modifications. They had a Cabriolet model off of this. Mm -hmm. But this is the one that's most sought after. It's the 2002 TII. The original 2002, which was, I believe, 68 or 70, the first ones, only had 98 horsepower. So it was not a, a very performance car, but it was four-seater with a wonderfully large trunk, an amazingly large mm -hmm. trunk. And then this car, they put the TII with the fuel-injected, and the fuel-injected motor now is approximately 135 horsepower, Big which yeah. when we're talking about the other cars over there, it doesn't sound like much. But, but you also have a lighter car here too, You right? have a lighter car and a nimble car, and this car really had a nice mixture of everything together. Let's pop the hood and yeah. take a look underneath. Okay. And but, then did you do anything uh, horsepower wise to the engine? Did you increase it more? You kept it no. all stock? Okay. This was something that we just kept stock 100%. And really, the car was really a bad leaker. I had all kinds of oil leak. Okay. So we did a timing chain on it. So we replaced all the covers on the front, the oil pan gasket. We did a mm -hmm. rear main seal on it. Um, so all the gaskets were really more that was done. All the fan belts and hoses were changed. I do that on all my cars when I get them. We do the brake lines. We did a complete front suspension on the car. We did a complete rear suspension. New shock absorbers on the car. Um, I put front and rear shocks and struts onto the car. Um, but it's, You really went through it end to end then. It, I, you know, I've said this once and I've said it a hundred times. I don't want to restore another car. And then I find another car, and it's kind of like a puppy when he looks at you. Yeah. You know, uh, you just got to give in, and you end up doing the repairs that it needed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I feel good that I brought this car back, because I don't know if anyone would have done what I did to the car, or if they would have just, you know, cut it up or done something else to it. Well, that's just been fantastic. I mean, just looking at all the cars here, you have to be so happy with the collection that you put together. Over the years, I mean, is there anything more you'd like to do with your collection? You're gonna want to add to it? What are your thoughts? Well, I'm always looking for something new. I mm -hmm. recently spent a little time over at the Ferrari dealer, looking oh. and see if they've got something uh, interesting. I've always wanted a Porsche Turbo, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna just have to make a little more space, I think. Yeah, because now you're, what, semi-retired, would you say? I would say, I would yeah. say. So your sons have taken over this great business empire you built and now you get to do what you truly love, right? 
Okay, to play with my car, well done. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Really appreciate all your time. And uh, maybe we'll get a chance to pull one of these cars out and listen to that Hemi and this little uh, four-cylinder. Let's do it.